Hello and welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today for the second installment of Autumn Arrangements. My name is Dara. Let's begin by first sterilizing our Victorinox florist knife. And then let's go in with the Garden Sharp Beveled Edge Floral Knife Sharpening Tool. This is a very specific tool for beveled edge blades, which the Zenport Shears and the Victoria Knox Florist Knife have here. And I'm going in with Pokeweed first, and I'm using the Zenport Shears. Very important tool here, because if I were to just use my hands, as you might've seen in that other frame, Pokeweed is a very stringy foliage and can get very messy and tangly. So working with the Zenport Shear will really help to keep your workflow super quick and easy and clean. It's really great for fine detail work, fine little petals and stringy foliage and all sorts of fine detail work. I talk about this in every single one of my tutorials because it is truly one of my favorite tools to use. This is not a sponsored video, unfortunately, but I look forward to the day when it is because all of these tutorials come at you for free. And if you appreciate this content, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe, turn on the notification bells, do all of the things because it really helps a small channel like this thrive. We're almost to a thousand subscribers here and that'll really help once I have passed a thousand. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get the channel monetized and it will really help me to use this as part of my career. So what we're doing with the Zenport shears here is cleaning up most of the foliage and then I'm creating an orb like shape with this foliage that will instruct the rest of our arrangement. This is a round arrangement, but I'm going in with the foliage first and basically imagining that all the flowers will kind of sit in the center part and in the negative spaces. So I kind of really imagine basically how I want this arrangement to look and with the dimensions of the container. Oh my gosh, girl. Today <laughs> we're working also with stock flower. This is a very fragrant flower. It's kind of similar to carnation and then it has a very clove-like fragrance to it. I really love this flower. I use it in a lot of my arrangements. And what I do in the prep preparation phase as I'm preparing the flowers, I take all of that foliage off because most of the time it does not add any ornamental beauty to the arrangement and the foliage doesn't really hold up that well. So as you're preparing your flowers, I suggest removing all of that foliage. That way all of the hydration goes to the blooms. And I'm kind of clustering this around the arrangement I only had five stems of this incredible Dutch coxcomb celosia, and what I'm doing as I'm holding, as you saw in that frame, I'm holding the stem up and seeing what position it looks in best because every single flower is going to have a different shape and you'll need to rotate the bloom a bunch of different ways to see which way will most enhance the look of the flower in proportion with your arrangement. And if you watched the tulip care video, this was a little trick that I did there to get the tulips to stand straight up. There's a couple of different ways that you can do this, but I used the plastic that the tulips came wrapped in and then I go ahead and let them hydrate overnight in a plastic collar sleeve and it really helps to keep them as upright as possible without damaging the stems or the blooms. Some people like to prick the base of the bloom head with a wire. I actually haven't tried that. Some people like to use copper pennies. I do not 
find that that has worked really well. So I just recommend either with paper or the plastic that it comes wrapped in to go ahead and give it a little collar, let it hydrate, and it should keep them mostly upright. Tulips are a very wayward stem, so it's not always hard. It's not, it's not always that they're going to stand straight up. They, that's just what they do. So now I'm taking this gorgeous neutral kind of khaki colored carnation and clustering those into the arrangement and I set them about a half inch depth apart from each other. That will really help to bring dimension to the arrangement. And super special ranunculus here. Luckily for this arrangement, you might be able to tell um, that I had some time to let these flowers open out. So I had a couple of days preparation that I was able to let the flowers hydrate, drink up their water and their flower food and open out to the size that they will basically stay in for the lifespan of the arrangement, which is super helpful because then you really get the accurate and overall uh, shape of the arrangement that you're making. Oh my God guys this rose oof, oh my god this is rose dark expression you can find all of the names of every flower as well as all of the tools that i use to create this arrangement in the description box below these tools again are not sponsored but they are affiliate links and i do earn a very tiny small commission should you purchase any of these items it just allows me to continue making these videos it really helps this channel so if you decide to purchase something and you've learned about any of the tools here today because of these videos i super appreciate your purchases from those links so thank you very much Again, the, the name of this rose is called Dark Expression. This is a super gorgeous cup style garden rose. And these really opened out. So super glad again that I had the time to let these open out because otherwise this would be a completely different looking arrangement and highly, highly, highly recommend. Another spectacular rose, we have Rose Cold Brew. Excuse me. <laughs> I love all of these roses that are coming out with new names like espresso, cold brew, barista. It's like a coffee series of neutral colored roses that are really, really super special. One of the things I didn't mention earlier is that as I'm designing these arrangements, there is very much an order of operations and an order in which I put the stems in. I take an assessment of all the types of flowers that I have, how delicate each stem is, how hardy or sturdy each stem is, and then put them in in corresponding manner. Meaning ranunculus are pretty delicate stems, so I would not save those for the end of the arrangement because the arrangement would have a lot of stems and it would be difficult to get them in and they're much more likely to get damaged on their way in if they're able to get in at all. So usually I'll finish these arrangements with roses because their stems are woody and they're very hard and it's kind of easier to, for lack of a better term, you can kind of you know, push them down into the arrangement easier without damaging those stems. Whereas like the pokeweed, the stock, the ranunculus, all of those are more delicate stems. But with these, like this trachelium and then the Queen Anne's lace, it's, it's odd because they have a delicate stem but they're not necessarily mushy and they also have a very fine and thin stem. So you kind of have to know each material that you're working with and the style of the arrangement that you're trying to achieve and the order in which they should go into the arrangement because it'll really help you with creating the style that you want effortlessly. Sometimes, and I try to keep in clips in these videos to show you how difficult it can be as your arrangement gets fuller to get stems in there. 
if you're creating this style arrangement. Of course, if you're creating something more loose, this doesn't necessarily apply, but this is the most satisfying aspect to me about creating these arrangements is the abundance of materials that I'm using and how strategic I have to be with my hand placement and using both hands to move other flowers and stems out of the way. It's a whole process and I just thoroughly love it. So if you're trying to create this style arrangement, that I hope that this information helps you. If you like that little trick, give this video a thumbs up. Now we have Flora Life Finishing Touch Spray. This helps to keep all of the flowers lasting super long and hydrated. It is a wax-based sealant that holds moisture in and I always, always, always finish my arrangements with this because basically it coats all of the petals with this wax-like substance and locks in moisture. It's the same thing, or similar, I should say, to us using, humans using a moisturizer that helps us to lock in moisture because as we're going through the elements throughout the day, we lose moisture. So when we apply a moisturizer to our skin, it locks in moisture and keeps our skin looking super supple and fresh and radiant. And it is basically the same theory for flowers. So here we have it. Here is the finished look. I loved, absolutely loved this palette. It's kind of a hybrid between a summer, autumn, and Christmas arrangement. I love all of the burnt colors and the green embellishments that I used here. Overall, just giving it this really fun, eclectic, almost vintage style look today. So really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that you learned something new. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, also find me on Instagram where you can see just basically pictures of my arrangements, not just moving images. Um, and we can connect there as well. So thanks again for joining me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe, turn on the notification bell, do all of the things. And I so look forward to seeing you in the next one. Leave me any of your comments and questions below and I'll see you next time. Thanks again.